Um, Boris Lee were on television yesterday, live on, on TG Cahar. What did you make of that game? I, I'd have to say it was a fairly septic game. I, I would have to be totally honest about that. It wasn't a great advertisement. The weather was terrible. Um, it, the game started out with a flurry of wides. So you know yourself, that's, that's always the recipe for a fairly turgid affair. And then Nina had only four points scored after 45 minutes. So it started out with both, te both teams kind of misfiring, lots of wides, terrible weather, and then just Nina, I, I just thought, uh, a very, very poor performance. I presume you, you feel similarly about the, about the fair that was on show. Oh, well, look, at it's, it's, it's winter hurling, Shane. It was just uh, the showers, the wind and the rain yesterday was atrocious. It was a real spoil sport, wasn't it? Actually, it was. in, uh, below in Welsh Park yesterday, I saw uh, two occasions uh, the hurley slipped out of players' hands Billy Nolan was taking a free at one stage and uh, the hurry just flew out of his hand, went into the stand and uh, in the second game, the intermediate final, the goalie was taking a puck out and the hurry went flying after he connected with the puck out. So, um, yeah, like really, really treacherous conditions for mm -hmm. hurling yesterday. But in, in terms of Boris, Shane, like how do this team compare to the team that won Munster a couple of years back? Well, it's kind of... It's probably not all that different. I mean, last year, uh, Johnny Kelly wasn't involved and um, Marin Maher, who I grew up playing with the whole way up, he was involved. He's a brother, brother of Brendan Maher. So uh, they're not all that different in a way. I mean, there is a certain amount of long ball that you'll see in there um, going long on Niall Kenny and Connor Kenny. Both of them operate on the inside line a lot. Now, not all the time, but Niall Kenny is probably six foot six, six foot seven. Uh, Connor, nicknamed Moose, he's six foot three or six foot four. And Connor is definitely the more free scoring forward. So you get the ball into him and it's going to be trouble. Like Nina, you could see very much were struggling with the ball that was going inside. So Barry Heffernan went from my view on the TV was he was playing the half back line slash sweeper and then he had to move back into the full back line. So you're talking about a player, a county player who can collect short ball and drive out past um, an opposition half back line through midfield and set up attacks. He has to be decommissioned in a way in terms of an attacking force because he's moved back to the inside line. Uh, Brendan Maher had been playing further up the field in the previous outings and he was quite, he was moved back to wing back. So you, you remember against Bally Gunner, he was kind of playing, he was wearing number six, but probably playing wing back in those games against Bally Gunner and St. Thomas. He was back in that position again. I think that suited him better. Uh, Burroughs probably just drive too many balls to the clouds of my like, like Dan McCormack was brilliant sweeping from centre back. Uh, just won an amount of ball, driving out with it all day, but probably too much of it went to the clouds. So the half forward line, wasn't in it as much as it could have been. And that's kind of been Boris's, I wouldn't say failing, but just something that can definitely be improved on is getting a little bit more to the half forward line uh, and working it that way. I thought Seamus Burke was brilliant um, in, in the full back line. Uh, JD, James Devaney, his, bur his drive and run up through the centre led to the goal. So there was good and bad, but you'd have to say from Nina, it was very poor. The free taking killed them. It was actually odd seeing Jake Morris taking frees towards the end of the game. He's very... It looked like a guy who doesn't take them all that often because his, his style was a little bit odd, but he was not... Uh, has he ever taken free Shane for Clubber County, Jake Morris? I just haven't seen it. I mean, maybe mm. he does now and again, and I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen him do it for the, the county. I'm even trying to think for that under-20 and under-21 team a few years ago. I don't think he did. Now, maybe I just have a bad memory and someone will correct me. Um, but no, I mean, good win for Boris Lee because it was winner takes all. And in the other, gr the other group game, Killer One... They beat Ross Gray, but that was a dead rubber because Killer One are also uh, are already true. Yeah, uh, I see John O'Sullivan here saying, can't understand how little Paddy Cadell has played for Tip. He should have been a guaranteed starter for the past two years. He's definitely a player who's uh, who I've been pumping for the last kind of year or two that I thought he should have seen more game time. I think he will now. I mean, I was watching uh, J.K. Brackens, his club, lose to Lockmore Castellani, 21 points to 113 on Friday night. And you know what I mentioned already about Barry Heffern and the way he takes possession and just drives out through and you need that, like you see that with your Watford team the whole time. You're going to have Irla Daly and probably Ty De Borca hopefully back next year. And they're two lads who can drive out. But Paddy Cadell just constantly driving out with the ball and dragging two or three lot more lads with him as he's a horsing up the field. And I think Brackens, for a team that were Seamus O'Reen, so the second tier and the senior Tipperary the last couple of years, up until a couple of years ago, they've been really good. They, they pushed the likes of, they pushed Kiladangan very close. They beat McCarkey Burris. And they lost 21 points to 113 the other evening. And like Lockmore have that sort of class and that experience. They've 
you know, the, the two McGrath brothers there, actually, sorry, the three McGrath brothers and Brian McGrath was probably one of the lads who kind of stood up. Um, but they, they were quite good and Paddy Cadell was very good the other night. Another team, um, Kiladang and I actually think are the front runners for the Tipperary Championship. Wouldn't it have been interesting to see? I, I'm not sure how much you would have seen Kiladang in, but it's a shame for them that they didn't actually get to play the Munster Championship last year after finally winning a senior title. Yeah, look, you can look at both ways. I suppose they had the, they had the opportunity to celebrate and celebrate a county title and enjoy it, even though there was COVID restrictions around at the time. Um, I wonder about Torna Sarsfields, though, Shane. They've been kind of a, a sleeping giant, maybe, for the last couple of years. Um, I'm hearing very good things about them. Are they the, the team to beat? I know you have a fancy for Kiladang in there, but how are Torna Sarsfields looking? I would actually put uh, Kiladangan as the favourites, and I think Turles, Burris, Lee, Lockmore, you can never, you can never really rule them out. After that, I'm not really sure. Do I see Mullinahone winning it? I'm not sure if I see Clonolty winning it. Um, and after that, you know, there, there's teams that are going to come through, like Killinall are still in it. They're going to play a preliminary quarter final after winning the South. But Turles, they were. They were good the other day. Like they've they've battered the teams in their group. Like so, they've beaten Drum, uh, the hammered Aero, Ganacarty, and they beat Upper Church by ten on Saturday. I was on Saturday, yeah, in Templemore, and I watched the game and I thought they're a good team and the sort of team that will batter poor teams or average teams. You know the way some teams, you know, you'd see Mayo over the years. Uh, they'd be in a qualifier against the team that you think they'll beat by ten, and they'll some for some reason they'll play at that team's level and only squeak over the line. Whereas Turles are the sort of team that, and I say mean, mean this as a compliment, they're able to hammer a fairly average team. But then I just, I'm not convinced from what I saw that they'll win a county title this year. I think they're pretty good, but, you know, Rona Maher there at centre back, he's kind of at the peak of his power. Now, I think he might have been jumping from wing to, to centre back. You know yourself, it can be hard to tell when you're watching on the stream. Paddy Creeden is a really good young forward. But I don't know, I'm not ultimately convinced by them yet, even though they put up 324. But it was unbelievably dramatic in the way that they beat Upper Church from bad. So they, how, how dramatic can a game where somebody wins by 10 points be, especially for the team that's hammered? So what happened was Upper Church, based on how the game between Drum and Inch and Aero Donahill, Anna Carty Donahill went, Upper Church needed to lose by 10 points or fewer to get through. And I was watching the stream. It was gas crack watching this because Paul Jenkins uh, was, and I think it was Ken Hogan, they were trying to figure out on the fly how many points Upper Church <laughs> needed to win by. And obviously the crowd were there cheering on Upper Church as they get a point to go from 11 points behind to 10. <laughs> but they, they ended up doing that in like really deep into injury time. And then Rona Maher scored a point from about 100 yards to put Turles 11 ahead. And I think all of the injury time should have been done at that stage. But then the 68 minute out of 60, uh, Paul Ryan gets a free on the sideline. Now, he hadn't been on the freeze in the first half. And he was unbelievable on them once he took over from Parrick Green. He was absolutely class on them. He knocks over a free from the sideline. And the ref continues to let play go again. Final whistle goes. Lose by 10 points and they're into, <laughs> in as a second seed. <laughs> I mean, how much confidence can you have going into a quarter final after getting beaten by that much? Yeah, I know. It's, it's a similar kind of a story emerged in Waterford as well in the intermediate. Um, Cashmore lost by 10 points in a game. And uh, they, if, if they lost by nine, they would have been through to a semi-final. So they lost in the semi-final by a single point after winning their previous three group games. And uh, they'd won their previous three matches without Ty de Bork. They didn't play any club Ireland for Cashmore Kinsale Beg And Brian O'Halloran as well, who was injured too. But... Uh, Lost by ten. If they lost by nine, they were into a they were into a semi final, but they were they were dumped out. So uh, yeah, get the calculators yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. I'll just run through some of the other results in Tipperary. Uh, Drum and Inch they beat uh, Aero by two fifteen to one sixteen, but both both of the teams are out. Aero will be in relegation for the second successive year. In Group Two, Mungnahone beat Tumivara by thirteen points. Jack Shelley was brilliant, scored two five. Mikey O'Shea was very good, especially late on. Oh, Kelly and Paul Curran still uh, raging against the dying light for Mullinahone, who had these crazy sort of black jersey, but a red trim and sort of like electric sort of uh, shocks all over the jersey. It was, it was wild <laughs> stuff. But two were reduced to 14 men before halftime. Colm Cannon got a second yellow card. David Young, another man from 2010, he scored a great goal for two, but um, they only needed to lose by five points. Uh, I think it was a... 
Yeah, five points or less, and they were true, and ended up losing by 13. The red card was uh, a big part of that. If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.